what we're trying to do, as I said earlier, is to understand uh, what is so different or unique about a specific virus that it's able to move from one species to the other. And uh, to do that, then we usually go try to find different kinds of viruses. Some can move very easily between species and some cannot move at all. And try to compare these two different populations of viruses as to find out what's so unique about it. So we use molecular techniques like so-called reverse genetics. Pull genes out and pull genes in and trying to figure out, you know, which genes are responsible uh, for uh, this ability of the virus to move from one species to the other. The usefulness of this kind of work uh, are uh, several fold. Uh, first, you try to understand really how these viruses behave and what determines how they behave. Uh, uh, knowing the basis for uh, the ability of the virus to move from one species to the other uh, will give us a little jump start when we have an outbreak of influenza trying to figure out whether this, uh, if a new virus is detected, whether that virus is going to have the potential to spread between species or not. The one unfortunate thing about what's happening lately is the fact that we, uh, we, uh, everybody is calling that virus a swine virus. There are only certain viruses that can infect humans, and certain viruses can infect pigs or avian species. Swine, on the, on the other hand, are unique uh, uh, in, in, in this characteristic because they do have receptors for human, avian, and swine viruses. And it so happens that the uh, genetic material of influenza virus is such that when two viruses, two different viruses, get into the same host, then the genetic material can get mixed up and you end up with progeny viruses that are different from the parents. Uh, and that's essentially the kind of virus that we're dealing with right now. It's a virus that has genetic material from human viruses, avian viruses, and swine viruses, all mixed together. So uh, we really should avoid calling it a swine virus. Uh, and uh, the CDC is recommending that we call it by its scientific name, uh, H1N1. Uh, and for the time being, that's uh, uh, satisfactory, and we should uh, stay with that nomenclature.